Oh, I sure am feeling a bit ill. You know what would really, really make me happy? To uh, have a little little peek at the old the old subscriber count, as we normally do. We go, oh, oh, we have a little, oh, a little squint here. What do we say? Oh, twenty. Tw oh, 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 the number keeps getting larger. Oh, that's right, yeah. You know exactly what this means? That's right. Hello, welcome back. I'm a little poorly, but we've reached a large number. So that means we're going to make a nice cake, because that's what you do when you reach a large number. So the cake we're going to prepare today is an excellent recipe that I think both my mother, my grandmother, and my younger sister all like to make. The variety my sister makes is of course labelled diabetes cake, as it contains way more sugar than necessary, but the one I'll be creating is basically the one my mum makes. It is a slightly different from a usual chocolate cake, in that, I mean, sometimes she seems to substitute sugar for like carrot and beetroot, which surprisingly sounds kind of not that great. It's actually really good. I like, I don't really like beetroot at all. Carrot's all right, but it makes cakes quite nicely. I have no idea how to do that, however, so I'm just using sugar as normal. But the difference is, is that the filling is actually made out of a basically kind of like a Danish pastry-esque apricot filling. It's amazing. It's really good. I really like it. It's a bit strange, but it's quite cool. And the rest of it obviously will just be made from normal kind of Sainsbury's stuff. So, all right, I think that should be fine. The first thing we need to do is measure out everything. I've got the nice recipe here on a post-it note. I don't know if you can actually... There you go. I've got the nice recipe here on a post-it note, and I'm basically going to be doubling that, because this is per layer. It's a two-layer cake. So I need to... Oh, shit. Okay, this doesn't stick anymore. All right, oh, well, you can see my reflection there. Um, because we live in the 1800s, though, apparently we have to use ounces, and it says that we need to grab ourselves eight ounces of self-raising flour, eight ounces of margarine, it's close enough, and eight ounces of sugar. It's caster sugar. All right, so this is self-raising flour. It's the same everywhere. We need to get ourselves eight of this. If you're wondering why I got this wonderful uh, weight thing from Digital Scales, I think it was a Christmas present a few years ago, which was quite nice of her. Um, I think it was my mum that bought it for me anyway. I quite like doing a bit of cooking. I don't know if you've noticed. So having a bit of digital scales going on was quite a nice little thing. But it does mean that you can just look at it and be like, yeah, let's go. And it doesn't really matter that we're using ounces instead of grams either, because it just kind of does the conversion, because it's digital. So there we go. That's about eight ounces. Apparently you're meant to like do this properly and not have little bits over. But to be honest, I don't think anyone really cares. So I'll just dump that on in there. Probably could use a larger mixing bowl, but to be honest, screw it. Uh, we need to get ourselves eight ounces of sugar as well. This is just normal white caster sugar from Sainsbury's. I kind of, I, in my first year of university, I used to kind of skimp around loads of different shops to try and get the cheapest stuff. Hence why in my first cooking video, I had Waitrose pasta. Some of you might have been thinking, oh God, he's posh. First of all, yes. Second of all, I can't afford normal Waitrose things. But at the time, pasta was super cheap and always on sale there and I eat a lot of pasta. So, I used to specifically go out of my way to go to Waitrose to get a cheaper deal. Sounds strange, it's how it seemed to work. You're gonna have to forgive me if I do a couple of cuts here and there. I'm quite ill, so I'm gonna try and cut out all my coughs and stuff. But we'll just add that to the old mixture there. Quite nice, very satisfying. And finally, butter, margarine, doesn't really matter. We're just gonna grab ourselves a little bit of this, get ourselves eight ounces, really? That's a lot of margarine, holy shit. I bought another thing just in case this isn't enough, and I don't know if it will be. It's quite satisfying to uh, to use. If you're wondering why I use this one specifically and not the other flora, it's because I once... I don't remember this. I, was, I think I was making a crumble once, and I thought it would taste nice, because I really like butter. Turns out that this just tastes nicer than normal margarine. I still think it is margarine. It's made with plants. So presumably that's, that's all margarine is, isn't it? It's basically just plant butter. All right, there we go. Eight ounces using our amazing... Butter chisel spatula, I believe the, the Mayans called it. I just drop that all in there. I'm assuming this is all getting picked up. If not, I am a little screwed. That should be all right. Might be a bit quiet. Might have to raise the volume a little bit, but that'll be all right. What else? All right then, so according to Google, it's one teaspoon. So if you don't live in the UK, this is a teaspoon. This is a tablespoon. Hello again. So one level teaspoon of that. Don't know how well this is, you know, I'll just measure it and then... Alright, that's about a teaspoon level enough of baking powder. Should be alright. We need to grab ourselves two eggs. 
courtesy of the Sainsbury's chickens. Although times by two, we need four eggs, I guess. Now then, I crack quite a lot of eggs, like I eat them quite a lot, so I've gotten pretty good at getting them without any shell in. So I think we've done a pretty good job there. I think we'll add in the cocoa powder at the end. So we're meant to stir this all together. I'm going to manually stir it together just for like a minute to try and kind of even stuff out, and then I'll just grab a and get it done professionally. That's all probably do for now. I just want to mix everything together in a nice, ordinary fashion. Should be good. You know what I can do, actually? I can, like, skip this up so it looks super satisfying. I could do, like, a little, little time-lapse kind of thing, you know? When they, like, zoom that up. A bit like when they do, they do, like, little Minecrafty zoomy zoomy videos, and they're like, oh, today I'm gonna build a giant chicken out of wool. And they're like, alright, then, how are you gonna build that giant chicken out of wool? And then they just speed it up over, like, six weeks, and you're like, oh, that is a giant chicken made out of Minecraft wool. Alright, that's uh, that's about enough that for now, just on the manual mixer. Because I am privileged and my parents bought me baking gear for Christmas a couple of years ago, I'm that kind of guy. I'm going to get an electric whisk out, because I think I, yeah, I own one, and I'm going to go... Alright, so you probably shouldn't do what I've done, I'm just kind of trailing a wire across the floor, but it should be okay. This is a very ordinary, like, supermarket mixer. Maybe I bought it. No. Did I buy this? I actually don't remember. I was probably bought it, to be honest. But anyway, it's just a normal mixer, so you put it on very, very low, and you just let it kind of move around and it'll do its thing. So, make sure these are in, make sure these are clean. Don't touch those with your finger, because might, you might lose your fingers. You need those. They're very handy little tools. I'm just going to shove that in, very slowly. Oh. oh, I'm minding my finger, don't you worry. I know some of you just now were like, oh no, he's going to lose his finger. You probably can't even hear me, can't look. I can speak all the way over here, so I'm a bit louder than the background. You have to be kind of careful not to lose your finger, but if you're not dividing your attention talking to a camera, you should be okay. And I don't actually know if you'll lose your finger doing this. I've never tried. I've never managed to lose a finger. But one day it's going to happen, and I'm going to have to lie to people and say I was in like a, a humongous battle or something. And it was just a, it was just a minor wound. And they're like, oh no, you lost the whole finger, what are you going to do? And I'll just be like, I don't know. Just have a kind of continue going on. Maybe bake a few less cakes as a result, but it's starting to look pretty good, quite smooth. Pause that for a second, have a little look. Can you see that? It's looking good, isn't it? So, what we need to do is add the... Is that going to sit there? Please don't fall over. Okay, it lied. Um, okay, we need to grab ourselves one ounce of... Cocoa powder, aka chocolate. So you grab that. Don't really need this spatula anymore, but it doesn't really matter. We will shove our boy in blue on. How are you doing down there? You see that? You can see that. And we will shove in two ounces, because we are making two layers. This stuff smells really good. I've tried just eating it for fun, because I like chocolate. It actually tastes horrible, like it's so bitter. But if you have it in small amounts, it's really quite nice. So two ounces of this. Yeah, smell, you can't really smell that, it's a camera. It smells really good though. I really like chocolate. It's definitely like one of my favourite things. I think we're going to lose it in like 50 years. Apparently it's going to go extinct or something. But anyway, yeah, we're just going to shove that in there. Try and do it nicely. Oh, look, in he goes. This might make it a little cloudy. I should probably do a manual mix first. That's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to be smart, be smart around this. I'm going to put this boy in here, just for now. I'm just going to give him a manual mix, get the the powder in the way it was intended. So if I just give that a quick little, like that. Actually really good. We're going to lose a couple chunks here and there, just to, you know, debris and Brexit. So we're just going to, oh god, it's going to get really fucking powdery in here, isn't it? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Have a little look. Not chopping my fingers off. Don't you worry. If I do, trust me, this will get many more views. And we just give it Good old mix. Make sure we just get everything off of the edges here. Don't want anything to be uncomfortable. Normally, I guess I'd meant to like manually stir in the last, but you know what, I'm going to do that. Let's take out the little boys in blue. Pop those in there. Put you away. So, right now, looks like that. Looks very good. Don't know how the camera looks. The camera probably makes it look awful because it's a bloody phone camera. And I'm not going to buy like a bloody actual camera to make these. I think the low quality makes them even better. But yeah, this is actually the right colour, thinking about it. I think it just needs a bit more mixing. 
The hardest part is always getting the extra chocolate out of these little these little boys here. But that's all right. We can just give them a little give them a little poke, and yep, there we go. The jewels of our kingdom as they fall back into the old mixing bowl. Now you can eat this. I wouldn't recommend it. Actually, no. I would one hundred percent recommend it. It does have raw egg in it, so you'll probably die. But dying for chocolate is probably you've lived a full life at that point. I think. All right, that's him done. So now we just want to make sure everything in here is roughly mixed together. All the walls, there'll be a little, little bit of flour lying around, a little bit of chocolate. We just want everything to be mixed together nicely now, as to one wholesome bowl of delicious chocolate. All right, looking good. All right, yeah, my camera is really kind of crap, but that's all right. This is actually looking amazing in real life, but we need to shove this into the tray. Mm. So I've got two Kind of small cake trays, actually. Admittedly, they're not very large, but they're about the size we want. They're about the size of my hand. There you go, about the size of my hand, they're on. And we will just open both of those. We need to grab ourselves some grease-proof paper, which we will do. So it's around there to around there. Give them a snip. Give it a second snip. Try carefully. There we go. Now I know you can use scissors for the whole thing, but I'm not boring. So yeah, that roughly fits. We need to grab ourselves a little bit of kitchen paper. Here's a little bit. Grab ourselves a tiny bit of kitchen paper. Tiny bit of that margarine or butter or whatever, just a little bit. Just kind of put that around on the inside like that. Main reason I'm doing this, I don't know why actual cooks do it, probably the same reason to grease it, but basically it keeps if there is cake on it for some reason, the cake will come off, but mostly it's because it means the greaseproof paper sticks somehow, even though it's greaseproof. And it also means it will come out really easy at the end and you don't have to like wiggle around with it and smash it uh, loads of loads. Alright, uh, so we want to grab our boys in blue, shove those in there. It doesn't have to be exact. I don't actually know I could be this wasteful. It's kind of fun actually, tossing away paper like you just don't give a monkeys. Alright, well, that's good enough. We've got both of the tins looking like this. We now need to roughly equally distribute the chocolate between all the mixture we've got here. So, I don't know if I can actually catch this properly. It could probably be fine. My arm might be in the way, but you know what? That's fine. Shove him in the middle, like that. Shove him in the middle, like that. And shove him in the middle, like that. It's kind of difficult doing it with the camera angle I was doing, so I'm just going to manually shove it in. But you basically just shove it in the middle. It'll kind of spread out a tiny bit by itself, not very much. So you've got to do a little bit of manual movement in there. Don't worry if the height doesn't seem normal. We've used raising flour, remember? You know what that does? It gets kids who go straight to university, because it's good at raising. Alright then, so, I've roughly even evenly distributed the mixture we had between the two bowls. Roughly, give or take. There's a few bits of mess here and there, you know, bits have probably fallen behind the paper, you know, things are probably unleveled, there's probably loads of things going wrong. But to be honest, fuck it, we're making a nice cake, it doesn't matter. Anyway, what we need to do now is heat our oven. I'm going to use, you can't actually see it because my oven's trash, but I'm going to shove it on fan mode. One, a little bit like 190, 180. Now, my fire alarm's very angry, so I'm going to have to shove my fan on max. So I'm going to shove these in the oven. Might as well just shove them in now, to be honest. And I will see you all in about 10, 20 minutes. I'm gonna give it a poke, make sure they're doing okay. It should be fine on that rack. I don't think it really matters too much if they're on the top of the bottom. Maybe it does, it's probably fine. But anyway, we will see you in 10 minutes when my fire alarm goes. All right then, then. So it's been in there for around 20-ish minutes. I dropped it down a little bit in temperature, so it should be okay. Might be a little bit crispy. I might have been a little bit busy for a little bit, but we'll have a little look. I'll bring it out. I'm gonna do this all without the fan noise, so give me just a moment. Oh uh, yeah, look, little little bits did kind of crisp off that was stuck to the edges, but it looks like we did kind of get to it just about in time. The lighting looks a little bit funky there. I probably think this boy over here was about five minutes away from burning. I forgot how fast they cook, to be honest, but the actual test is, I don't own a skewer, so I'm just gonna use a knife. Shove a knife down the middle, just like that, and it comes out clean. That means it's cooked. It, I'd much rather it be... Actually, I mean, this one's done perfectly, to be honest. This one, probably by the wrong end of the oven, to be honest, but if I shove a knife in this one... Oh, 
There we go. Comes out clean as well. I'd much rather it was actually cooked properly. I know I was eating raw dough earlier, but um, oh, this is going to be so good. I'm going to leave these for uh, it tends to be about 10 minutes or something just to cool out in here, and then I'll take them out and then just shove them on the rack normally. All right, so while I'm waiting, I'm going to prepare the top on, or just the middle actually. So the middle is going to be made out of dried apricots mixed with a little, little bit of apricot jam, just a little bit. And the top's going to be made out of basically just melted chocolate. That's all it is. Nothing too exciting. 72% dark chocolate, if you want to have a preference. But if you're wondering how it is you make dried apricot into normal apricot, I'd say about half of this. So, I mean, I've, I've used a little bit out of this for like stir fries and stuff. Really, really good in stir fries, by the way. Apricot. You wouldn't think it. You wouldn't think it works in a stir fry. It works really well, especially with halloumi cheese. But I'm just going to grab out... Well, it's roughly half the packet. This is 500 grams, so about 250 grams of apricot, give or take. Doesn't matter if there's a bit too much, it's actually so good to have. Um, you can always refrigerate it if you make a little bit too much, but... Yeah, that'll probably be... Yeah, that'll probably be about enough. Probably a little bit too much, even. That's alright. So, what we've got here, a little bit of apricot. We're just going to shove a tiny bit of water in there. Kind of cook them a little bit like rice where you bring them up to the simmer and then you just kind of let them sit there and absorb all the water. So I'm just kind of doing this off the top of my head. I think it's probably a little bit wrong, but the idea is you basically just simmer them for a little bit in water and they'll absorb all the water, they'll rehydrate and then you can mix them with the jam. So if you give me... Oh, it's so good. You can actually just eat them. They're so good. I'm going to shove that in the oven for like a couple of minutes just to heat up. So gas oven, doesn't really matter, just gonna go, uh, it's way too hot, so probably around, yeah, that'll be fine, just shove them on the flame like that, hello, and we'll just give them a minute, they'll just use like a nice little spoon, we just want them to soften up basically, they're still fairly soft to be honest, but like proper apricots when they're done are like basically like jelly, so we'll just give them like a little minute just to simmer, not to boil. All right, so I've just transferred them over there just because it's a little bit safer. But a simmer looks a bit like this, if you're wondering. There's a light bit of bubbling going on. The heat's not on too hot. There's a smaller flame, so it sounds a bit louder. But basically, it will... Uh, I think you're meant to use roughly the same amount of apricot and water. And you basically just wait. The apricots will absorb most of the water. And then I will show you in a minute what we do then. This should take maybe four or five minutes, maybe. It doesn't take too long. While we are waiting, we can, of course, remove the cakes from their pr imprisonment. There we go. I'm just gonna quickly pull this thing, pull this thing, put them onto the tray. Well, I've just used my hands probably, can't I? How hot are you? That's not too bad. Let's just bring you out over here. That's, that tin's not too bad. I probably don't wanna grab it with my hand, to be honest, but, but shove them over here. Oh, there we go. Oh, we can actually just remove the slightly darker bits if we really want. But anyway, what we should do now is take them out of their little houses that they're in. Quite easy, really. Just pull them back, like so. Oh, probably could eat this, actually. Mmm! Oh, I've done it properly. That's actually quite surprising. But, uh, yeah, they're feeling A-OK. -okay. They shouldn't stick to the, to the paper, as you can see. This isn't the way you're meant to take them out, I think. I just kind of want to show off. Put him lightly on there. Take the paper away from the fire. Number one tip. My throat's killing me. But, look. This one here probably could have been done a little bit better. That's alright. We all make mistakes. And who cares because we've made a chocolate cake. It's a rhyme. It's the rhyme of the day. Like, the rest of him looks alright. So we'll just put him on the bottom like this. And then the other, like, nicer looking bit can go on the top. But... Just shove him on there to cool down, give him like 10 minutes, get rid of all these extras. We don't need these extras, we can just brush those off, I'll clean this table later, and we'll be good to go. Like that. Alright then, so our apricots are currently looking like this, let zoom back out again. Um, give them a few more minutes and I think they'll be done. So, what we need to do now is we need to melt some chocolate, very easy. Remember what Mary Berry said, the fine and wise Mary Berry, chocolate melts in a child's pocket. So don't burn it. Biggest mistake you ever see from people doing chocolate things is like 
shoving it on super high heat or cooking it or some horrible thing. No, we've got leftover heat in that oven, so I'm quite literally just gonna shove a chocolate bar in there, smash it up, and it'll just melt. We don't have to do anything, especially, number one tip, please, don't just shove chocolate in a saucepan and heat it up. That is a bad idea. If you're gonna do that, right, fill your saucepan with water, put the chocolate in this, and then put this on top of the saucepan full of water. The steam from the water will melt the chocolate. This stuff will melt in your hands. It doesn't need a high heat, all right? Just the tip of the day. And if you're having difficulty melting chocolate, just smash it into little bits, basically. So just shove them in there. And we're just gonna, just gonna crush them up. This is very fun. And we'll probably destroy the audio quality a little bit. Jesus Christ, I fucking love chocolate. This is also like delicious dark chocolate. I really, really, really like dark chocolate. So if any of you want to buy me a nice present, big slab of dark chocolate is pretty much all it takes. Yeah, it's probably broken up enough. You can make, you can smash it more, but that's, that's fine. That'll do. That was a whole bar of like what? That was a uh, hundred grams of chocolate right there. So grab open the oven. Hope it doesn't set off the fire alarm. Please don't do that and just shove them in there. It takes like a minute. You want to be very careful you don't burn him. But the apricots, still looking pretty strong. I can actually probably give them a poke. It's probably quite hot, but yeah, I'll give them another minute. Give them another couple of minutes. If you don't want to slightly speed up the process though, don't shove the oven on, but just stick the fan on and it'll just kind of blow the heat around that's already in there. You don't really need to give it any more heat than it already has though. So just give that a nice minute. You have a little look. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? That's probably the nicest, probably the nicest thing to look at ever. But apricots, hmm, they're probably about done, to be honest. Just gonna politely drain off some of the water. I can actually show you this, can't I? Here we go. See, look, just very politely. You don't want to get rid of necessarily a bit of all of it. It doesn't really matter. But just get rid of most of the liquid. Make sure you don't lose any apricots. That's fine. There's a little bit of liquid left, left in there, but that's A-OK. -okay. So we'll just shove you back on there. Shove the apricots. Mixing bowl. Like that, nice and soft. A little bit of liquid, doesn't really matter. You could probably leave all the liquid in, you probably don't even need to drain it. But, grab ourselves this boy. This thing you genuinely need to, need to be careful about. My voice, holy shit. Being ill makes me lose the ability to speak English. I got this on Amazon in the sale for like a tenner. It was really good, little Russell Hobbs food mixer, hand mixer. I'd recommend one, they're really, really good. You can use them to make many things, but they are dangerous as hell and you will actually lose your finger if you don't know what you're doing. So if you're like, like seriously, if you're not capable, I would recommend getting someone else to do it, because you might actually injure yourself. That's a very sharp blade, and if you don't know what you're doing, we'll lose it. But, we're going to shove them in there, we're going to give them a mix. I'm hoping you can see somewhat... I guess I could shove something under to tilt it a little bit. Um, let's grab you. How about that? You see that? Yeah, you can see that alright, can't you? So, hopefully I don't lose a finger doing this. Should be alright though. Yeah. He's not going to do much, is he? I'm going to have to give him a proper word. All right, just a little bit of pulping is all we need. Now we need to grab ourselves some jam, just to make sure it's a little bit more liquidy. It does need to be just a little bit, so actually, grab ourselves the knife we use for poking, a clean knife that we use for poking. I'm just gonna add in like some amount, I don't know, just an amount of some sort, so just, yeah, just shove it in. It gives it a little, little bit of variety, and I think it's a little bit easier to pulp something like this. So give him another word. You have a look. Looks like that now. Give him another whir, like this. Right, that should be good enough, and our chocolate will be probably more than enough melted by now, to be honest. Right. Yep, look at that. Done good, stuck it in the oven just for a little bit. Didn't actually shove the oven on though. Big tip, just uh, stick the fan on to make the heat a little bit more consistent. So, we need to wait for this to cool down a little bit. Probably only take like five minutes. All right, so it's roughly cooled down around now. I'm great lucky because when I moved into my flat, maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten months ago, I don't know, it was last summer, maybe the summer before that. I've already forgotten, time goes fast. But my younger sister made me a cake, this cake, pretty much, except without, uh, except without the filling, she just made chocolate buttercream. But she left me behind this very nice, I don't know if it's Ikea or something, cake tin, it's really nice. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm going to just transfer the slightly dodgier cake, ever so slightly dodgier, it's still alright. We're just going to transfer him upside down, in my hand. There we go, quite nicely, like that. 
doesn't have to necessarily be upside down. I just kind of like doing it like this because I'm a strange person and I think it looks aesthetic. But that's the middle, that's the bottom half basically. Now what we do is we transfer this stuff on. We can use a spoon actually. If there's any left over, as I've said, just keep it in the fridge. You can do whatever you want with it. It's just it's literally just apricot and apricot. It tastes really good. If you like Danish pastries, it just tastes like the middle bit of that. Really, really like it though. And it contrasts quite nicely with the chocolate. There you go, going for aesthetics here. So I'll just shove them on. And another reason, by the way, for flipping it upside down means you have a nice flat surface to shove the two cakes between. It doesn't really necessarily matter if it's a flat surface or not because this kind of acts as a glue. Uh, hence why I like using it over anything else. But I like to go really over the top and put way too much on because I really like it. Obviously, I'm not expecting you to have to do this um, apricot thing. If you do like apricot, go for it. But you can literally make the filling out of whatever you want. The easiest, to be honest, is just melting another bar of chocolate. Uh, the second easiest is probably making chocolate buttercream, which is if you just Google how to make buttercream and just shove chocolate in, it's that. Not too difficult, but it's a couple of steps up. I just really like apricots. You can pretend it's healthy for you as well, because I guess you technically are eating a lot of fruit, kind of, but I think also you're meant to wait for it to settle a little bit longer, but I'm on a little bit of a timer here. I kind of want to put this out today. So I'm still going to edit this and render this later, and then upload it. Yeah, just keep putting it on, to be honest. You don't really have to, as I said, but I really like it when it spills over the edges. So nice. Oh my god, it's starting to spill. That is the best of all times. When you're making a nice cake and it's overspills, it's actually the best thing. All right. Holy shit. All right. It looks like a lot from that angle, naturally, from the side. Looks like that. So still loads, to be honest, but... Oh my god, is it so good. We need to grab our final half. This one can go on the top as necessary. Grab his little burnt bottom. Wait. Yeah, it's not burnt, it's just a little crispy. All right. Just shove them on. It's roughly the middle like that, isn't it? There we go. It's got a big gash on the front, but give him a little aesthetic view. Top half definitely rose more than the other. Maybe it's just from that angle though, but anyway. Starting to look pretty solid, a little messy, but we can solve that with the world's number one problem solver. Am I going to burn my hand with this? This might burn my hand, it's quite hot. Anyway, just going to quite lazily, oh, I don't know if I can actually do it from this angle, I probably can. Just going to shove that on and just let it melt. I want this to fall over the edges of the cake, I want it to be dripping down the sides. So good, oh. It's not dripping over the sides as much as I wanted it to. Let's grab ourselves a knife, try and get more out of there. That's about as uh, over the edge as I'm going to get it. I'm going to manually push it over. It just looks so nice when you do it. Probably could melt even more chocolate if I really wanted it to, but anyway. Let's just make it nice and round. This is going to be a round cake. I really like it when it drips over the edge, because when it hardens, that's just a big chunk of chocolate. And I don't know about you, I really like chocolate. And because we haven't added anything to it, we've done no sugar, anything like that, no salt. It's literally just a chunk of dark chocolate. And I really like dark chocolate. Don't know if I've mentioned that before, but anyway, look. What else we can do? Do a little, little cross section over the top like this. It means when it hardens, it will have a very polite little uh, pattern on it. Actually, let's, let's redo that, let's redo that. Look, I'm kind of bad at this. My sister's very good at scouring patterns on the top. I'm going to try my best to make her proud. There we go. We're not actually cutting the cake. I'm using the blunt side of the knife. I'm just cutting into the chocolate a little bit to try and open it up and give them a nice little pattern that I'll be proud of. Holy shit, that looks so good. So it's messy as all loving fuck, but do you know what else it is? It's actually delicious. So what we're gonna do there is I'm gonna end this for today. Thank you all very, very, very much for watching. Thank you all for sticking around. Thank you for pretty much everything. <laughs> it's been, been quite a wonderful time. But anyway, this has been Cooking with Woolen 3. He's baked a delicious cake. Looks a little funky, but it tastes of pure happiness holy shit but yeah i fucking love chocolate so much anyway i'm gonna leave him here to basically cool off for a bit i might shove him in the fridge for a couple of minutes just to let him harden a bit yeah yeah i'm actually gonna do that i'm gonna refrigerate him for like 20 minutes or something just to make sure that everything hardens but anyway that's gonna end up for today thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye